My father is a diehard New Yorker. He's very well known in Brooklyn and very well respected. There's not a person in the best side that don't know Doug. In my banking career, I had an opportunity to leave Brooklyn Bedford Stocks and go work in Manhattan on Park Avenue. But I wanted to stay in my community. He saw the opportunity to make some changes and do some good. And he did. How are you? How's business? While Doug was managing the bank, there was a significant increase of successes among the minority owned businesses. I know my business was able to grow because Doug was involved. Don't forget to call on me, man. Hello, Betty. How Hi, are you? Doug. It's How so good to see you. It's been a long time. She came into the branch and said to me, I want to buy the building, not just be a renter. We submitted her application. She was able to move into her own building. She's still there today. Betty's Gospel Den. I think it's really important for my dad for us to own something. I'm one of nine children, six girls and three boys. And in the early 60s, my parents put together enough money to purchase a home. I wanted to keep that building in our family. Remember how we used to tear it up here? Yeah. We had all these floors all to ourselves. Yeah. Because I know what my parents went through to get it, and I still own it today. He was a good big brother. You know, he cared for us, he looked out for us. When father passed, Douglas was 16, and he took on the man of the house role. He was there financially, physically. How can I help you? My father is the leader, and he made sure that me and my sister also knew that in life, we needed to be leaders. I love you girls so much. My parents' relationship was the epitome of relationship goals, as we say now. They loved and respected each other. We were married for 34 beautiful years. She was my best friend. My mom was diagnosed with MS before I was born. My wife spent the last eight and a half years of her life in a wheelchair. I've seen that man carry her from the, from the car into our functions that we had. At night, he would still like dress her for bed. And in the morning, he'd wake up and get her ready for the day. It's like, I'm loving you every minute of every day because I don't know when it will be your last. When she passed, we knew Douglas was going to be all right because we knew Douglas did her right. Service to others is the rent we pay for the space we occupy here on Earth. I always believe that we have a purpose here in life other than just what we can do for ourselves. And by serving as a lion, it gave me an opportunity to make a difference in my community and in the lives of others. When there was meetings, school board meetings and stuff like that, and we asked somebody in the club who would like to represent, who had their hand up was Doug. Doug and active members of bed Lions Club would each year join with me and meet with them in distributing toys at a major event, a couple thousand kids and to make sure that every child got at least one or two toys and especially a book. Doug invited me to become a lion after he gave me the experiences of doing service that lions do. He was not only my sponsor, but also encouraged me to become the club president. He said, Ben, I would be there to support you. I met Doug at our multiple district conference and it was history after that, you know? <laughs> I would not have met her if I had not been in line. If he says he's doing something, he's gonna do it with his full heart and commitment. And to have the first African-American president, Doug is the ideal person to lead our organization. He has the ability to bring us together. Diversity in our organization is a powerful thing. It only strengthens us as an association and I get so emotional when I talk about this. Because it's very special to me. Are we living who we say we are? Are we truly, really doing that? And I pledge to you, the lions of the world, that I will serve you from my heart to the best of my ability.